What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of Player Ratings as Spurs put down a statement yesterday in a 4-0 win against Aston Villa at Villa Park. Um, let's get straight into the player ratings, starting off with Vicario Sevens all round from us. And you'd have thought going to Villa Park, he would have been a lot more tested than he was. I think one save throughout the whole game, one shot on target they had. And uh, look, everything that he did have to do, he did really well. There was a couple of offside uh, moments in there from Aston Villa where he kind of put his head on the line mm. um, in one certain situation. But look, no thoughts at all from Vicario yesterday and you've got to give him credit. Yeah, I think the only save he had to make was from um, Zaniolo, which was at 2-0, um, which was quite, he did quite well to come out and smother that opportunity and make sure that there was no real chance there. But it was a quiet day for him because we defended brilliantly. And I think a lot of credit has to go to Romero and Van der Ven for how quiet Vicario was on the day, because if it wasn't for them, he might have had a, a lot more shots to contend with. But um, brilliant defensive showing. And I think Vicario uh, will thank uh, his defence for that. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to Pedro Porro, eights all round. And he showed yesterday how much we have been missing him in the couple of games that he has been out. I thought it was a flawless performance, particularly defensively in the first half. He was getting us out of all sorts of trouble with our poor passing out the back. Offensively as well, I thought he was playing well, uh, getting into the middle of the park, playing some really nice passes. Um, so be up to Pedro Porro. Yeah, and I, I think, I know Emerson had a great game last week, but it just makes such a difference having yeah. that kind of quality uh, that Pedro Porro has um, in his passing ability. Obviously, really involved in that first goal as well. Some really good link up with Kulisevsky on the touchline to get Spurs through uh, the Aston Villa midfield. And um, his passing just opens up so much um, sp uh, space uh, for the team and really gets us on the front foot. And it's so effective. So a uh, really great display and really great to have him back in the team. Kuti Romero up next. Sim gives him an eight. I gave him a seven. I was actually really frustrated with Kuti at half time uh, because I felt like a number of times his playing out the back was putting us under a lot of pressure. Um, but from a defensive standpoint, I thought he was um, impenetrable at times and he definitely stepped up massively in that second half, which uh, is why I gave him a high rating. And um, yeah, it was just uncharacteristic from Romero that passing in the first half. Yeah, I think barring a couple of um, sloppy moments from him in that first half, I thought that even in that first half, what defensively he was outstanding. I thought they really struggled to get any spare change out of him when it came to trying to get a shot on goal, tried to put putting us under pressure. I thought he was so aggressive. He was um, standing up to be counted as he always does. It was great to see him getting involved in that melee, protecting Kim Min Son as well from uh, putting and being put in a headlock from Douglas Louise uh, when McGinn got sent off. Um, I thought it was a really, really strong display and up against a very tricky opponent in Watkins, who's been in fine form, I thought Romero really, really dealt with him exceptionally well and a really top performance from him, um, barring yeah those couple of moments in the first half. Mickey van der Ven up next and another insane performance from our Mickey. Sim gives him a nine. I gave him an eight. Uh, it's just a shame he had to go off very early in that second half because he was probably our standout performer in the first half. The amount of times he was getting us out of trouble. He was, uh, you just can't get the ball past him. And when you do get the ball past him, he's just, uh, he's just got that recovery pace to get you out of trouble time and time again. He's so aggressive, he's so quick and he's fast becoming one of the best defenders in the Premier League. Yeah, he really set the tone, didn't he? Three minutes in with that crunching challenge mm. on Watkins right at the start. Where it looked, really looked like, I think Watkins had a few yards on him and you're thinking, how is Van der Ven going to catch up on, on him? But I need you wonder because I think it's just, when Van der Ven comes charging at you, there's just no chance you're getting away from him and he proved that in the first couple of minutes. He had to get Romero out of jail as well on a, on a, a couple of occasions as well but what I love about Van der Ven recently he seems to be getting a lot more confident on the ball and like striding forward and getting the ball out of his feet a lot quicker I felt like he was going for a spell where maybe he was hanging on to it a bit, a bit too long and maybe not moving forward with it and he seems to be getting that out of his system now he's so confident um, such an exemplary defender he's so uh, great to watch as well so graceful he barely ever fouls anyone you know he just does he doesn't need to he just nicks the ball off you which is so so great um, but as you say the only shame was he went off so early but I thought he was probably as you say probably our best player before he went off and didn't put a foot wrong so just and he actually got injured making a brilliant block off Bailey didn't he which was a, I think he was offside anyway but it was a brilliant block yeah. which again displayed how what a great defender he is absolutely let's move on to Destiny Udogi Sim gives him a 9 I gave him an 8 I thought it was Destiny's best performance in quite a while actually uh, to what you really associate Destiny with being aggressive doing those bulldozer runs up and down the pitch, countless amount of interceptions and tackles. Nothing got past him throughout the whole day. And I thought he was just a thorn in Aston Villa's side for the majority of the game. And um, 
I think it was down to him why they were getting so frustrated at times and McGinn had to try and take him out. He bought that red card as well. Well, he didn't buy it. I think McGinn just, abs I don't know what he was doing there, just didn't try and play the ball by any stretch of the imagination and um, nearly injured uh, Odogi in that moment. Let's hope by, at the end of the game he isn't injured, but it looked like he was hurt from it. Yeah, thankfully he was able to carry on and finish the game. So hopefully he's okay. I thought he was exceptional um, throughout the game, to be honest. Um, I think Doggy recently hasn't quite kind of been his most confident best for one reason or another. He hasn't done those like where he just charges right through the heart of the opposition. And he was doing that time and time again yesterday. And it was so hard for Aston Villa to contain. It was like if they if they got anywhere near him, he would just absolutely turn them and bully them with his physicality and just charge right through them. And every time he was doing it, Villa were putting them on the back foot. And it was so exceptional to see. And what I really liked about him as well is he was getting to those half spaces in like that number 10 position he likes to get to. And and he was being really technically proficient, keeping the ball, keeping the ball ticking over, progressing the ball forward as well. And um, he was just becoming a player that Villa was struggling to contain. And um, the only way they did was to try and kick him off the pitch. And thankfully, that worked to our advantage. Absolutely. Next up is Eve Bissouma. Sevens all round for Biss. Um, I was a bit frustrated with him at times in the first half. There was a really sloppy moment where um, he just played a shocking pass and Villa were set on their way. He nearly, <laughs> that moment where he nearly gave away a penalty. I mean, he did get the ball, but I thought it was a bit of a sloppy challenge from Bissouma in that moment moment and uh, that moment of the game but I felt after that especially in the second half he grew into the game um, defensively I thought he was on point he wasn't driving through their midfield but what he was doing was um, playing really good passes switching the, the switch uh, great switches of play simple passes as well uh, that the team needed to help us control the game and help us keep possession so another positive uh, performance from Basuma I thought yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Apart from that, maybe that sloppy moment uh, he did have, I thought it was a pretty positive display. Did keep, was tending to keep things simple rather than overcomplicating things. But what I liked about um, his performance, as you say, uh, his long uh, passing switches of play was uh, really on point in this one. Um, I think he completed three hours, four long passes. I think he was really good. And as well, um, what I liked about him, he, was, he wasn't maybe brave with his passing, but what he was brave was with his pressing. And a lot of the time when Villa were trying to play out the back, he would actually step into the final final third and be very very aggressive and try and win the ball back really aggressively and that really really benefited Spurs um so positive performance from Biss obviously still not quite at his best but I thought it was uh, he was I thought it was pretty good yeah Pup Matissa up next Sim gives him a nine I gave him an eight another really good display from Pup um I felt his performance just getting be kept getting better and better and better. He got taken off with 20 minutes to go and probably rightly so with him nursing that back injury and Spurs being 2-0 up. But um, you know what you're going to get with Pup Matissa, you know, non-stop running, helping the team, Endeavour, being physical in the middle of the park, helping us win that midfield battle as well. And look, you, got, you can talk about that assist for days because it was one of the best assists I've seen all season. What a cross right on the money for James Madison. Yeah, exceptional, exceptional cross from Saar. Definitely contender for assist of the season. The fact that he was able to pull that cross off um, while he was kind of falling over and off balance as well makes it even more impressive. Uh, he just goes from strength to strength week on week, Pap Matasayu. Really fails to... Um, disappoint every single week and for such a young player his level of consistency is quite astonishing and he's now start, starting to add that quality um, in his game as well with that with that unbelievable assist and I think that's now three goals and three assists for him this season so he really is going from strength to strength and I think he's on his way to becoming a really world class midfielder yeah I mean his ceiling is absolutely scary isn't it mm, the potential that he can have uh, and that he does have it's absolutely crazy uh, but let's move on to James Madison eights all round for Madders um, a really top display from James Madison, in my opinion. Obviously, he gets his first goal uh, since coming back from that injury, uh, taking that risk, late runs into the box, something that we haven't seen enough of uh, with James Madison since coming back. And he got the reward for that with a really nice finish past Martinez to set us on our way to put us 1-0 up. And uh, what he did after that, I felt like he just kept dropping deep, helping us uh, dictate the tempo of the game. Him in particular was dictating the tempo of the game and they just couldn't deal with him at times. And yeah, maybe he could have had and, um, a few more shots and um, hurt their opposition goal a bit more but what I felt like he was just being super aggressive and um, just keeping us keep helping us keep the ball 
Yeah, and I thought after he scored that first goal, which was a really nice, well-timed run from him, he started to really help dictate the game with his with his passing ability. And I felt um, when we had that control of the game, he was really um, dictating the play, dictating the pace of how Spurs play. And um, he was really being that playmaker that we know he can be. And Villa really couldn't deal with him. They couldn't get near him. And I thought he was really just uh, ticking, making the tick, making the ball tick over, over and over again. Uh, really top performance for Madison and probably... Probably, maybe, but maybe not. Maybe last week, but maybe one of his best performances since his return from injury. I think it is his best, to be honest. I really do. Um, moving on to Decky, eights all round for Dejan Kulusevski. He as well. I was actually really frustrated with him in the first half because there were loads of moments where we could have been in in, in really good situations, and Kulusevski's passing was letting him down a little bit. But in the second half, it was a completely different story from Decky. He was central to everything that we were doing. I think he was involved in, was it two or three out of the four goals that we did score? And um, he was at his creative best. I think two key passes on the day um, and they just couldn't handle him on that right-hand side of the pitch. Yeah, I thought in that second half, it was that was Decky uh, when he's at his Decky. best. Yeah, when that was Decky at his best in that first in that second half. Because first half, he was a bit sloppy. Uh, didn't think he was having a great game, but he really did turn it on in that second half. And phenomenal. Um, Phenomenal play for all, for the first three goals uh, that we did score. Great interchange of Poro and a great passing behind to, to Sal for the first. Great piece of pressing and a good run as well to stretch that defence for the second. And then an exceptional assist uh, marauding down the right-hand side and cutting it back on his right foot, putting on a plate for Human Son to absolutely bury for the third as well. And I thought he was actually giving their um, left-back a real... Um, a real tough time. I thought he was taking him on on a number of occasions. I'm getting a number of occasions and getting beyond him as well a few times. I thought it was a really strong display from Decky and it's really great to see him in full flight like that because when he is, he's hard to stop. Yeah, he really is. And we need to see that on a consistent basis now from Decky. We know we've got it, we know he's got it in him. So just um use that kind of passion the passion he showed in that second half use the quality that he has that quality he showed in the second half we need to see that on a more consistent basis from Decky and use that right foot more often because he used it again yesterday and look what happened you showed quality from it so use it more often uh, but let's move on to Brennan Johnson who started on the left uh, Sim gives him a nine I gave him an eight and I thought in terms of the first half he looked like the most dangerous player that we did have uh, straight from the off from the first minute he was attacking his fullback taking his man on something that we've been heavily criticized critical of him uh, since coming to Spurs and um, I think you're seeing a man growing in confidence and growing in stature of this Spurs team uh, the goal that he did have uh, was a lovely finish to the roof of the net and I think that's just um, a consequence of the confidence that he showed in that first half and I thought the goal he fully deserved and he was a thorn in Aston Villa side for the majority of the game yeah, they really struggled to deal with him. And it was so great for him to have a performance like that while playing on the left-hand side because it's been a, um, a a big subject of debate. Is he better on the right? Is he better on the left? And a lot of people have concluded, maybe including me, that you know he's much better on the on the right, but maybe he's starting to prove a few people wrong with that performance. And I thought he sh showed a new lease of life on that left-hand side, um, playing with so much more confidence. I think maybe his recent um, goal contributions um, have really given him that confidence to play the way that Ange wants him to play going on the outside of his defender not giving them a moment to rest I thought Matty Cash struggled to deal with him on a number of occasions and obviously that finish um, well, it finished right into the roof of the net that was a confident finish if I've ever seen one and you can really see he's starting to bed into this side now and look maybe we've got to start having a conversation about Brendan Johnson because that's now 10 goals and assists this season 4 goals 6 assists and he's you know for all the talk of um, about him being a flop and overpriced and all that kind of stuff for a first season at 22 years of age to have that kind of goal to have that kind of output after 27 games I think if you if you just isolate his minutes I think it's a goal contribution every one and a half games so he's really starting to consistently get the, get those goal contributions now yeah I would say like the performance level even with those goal contributions hasn't been there but yesterday was a massive step in the right direction because I thought the performance level was there, including the goal contribution. So um, massive big up to Brendan Johnson for his performance yesterday. And last but not least of the starting lineup is Hyung Min Son. Nines all round for Sonny. Uh, two assists and a goal on the day. Two big chances created. I thought in the second half, he was central to everything and uh, the leadership qualities that he was showing, that quality in the finish that we know Hyung Min Son has, I thought was absolutely breathtaking. Did you uh, think for one second when the ball fell to Hume Minson in that in that part of the pitch that he was going to not score? I mean, what an emphatic finish that was. But um, he was everywhere. He was literally everywhere in that second half. And if you look at his heat map, I'm looking at it here. There's just uh, 
bits of yellow and red all over the pitch and that just shows what a performance he had yeah and I even felt there were times that first half he was getting the ball deep looking to dribble at Villa and um, causing a few problems but wasn't able to get much joy but once that space opened up for him with the red card and with Villa being um, obviously 2-0 down that, that space was naturally going to open up and I, I remember I was sitting next to Hinchy in the game and I said now they're down 10 men Son's definitely going to get a goal you watch and obviously he did get it right at the end and it was a brilliant finish and uh, he really made the use of that space um, that uh, Villa left him and you can't leave a, pl- a world-class player like Human Son um, with that kind of space and he really made them pay t- uh, two brilliant ass- assists all the second one especially um, but uh, just burning past uh, Matt Cash and cutting it back for Werner for a great finish and obviously the first one um, keeping his car- composure getting the right way of pass and playing Brendan Johnson, Johnson so he can hit it first time so really great assist and then his goal I mean, it's just, he's just such a great finisher. You just know when it falls to him, if he's got any sort of space around him, he's going to be able to fire it um, in, into the net, into the back of the net. Martinez had no chance. So much power and pace on it. And I think 14 goals and eight assists now for him. Absolutely, he's having an unbelievable season. And if he can carry on this kind of form, because he's in really good form recently, like goal scoring wise and goal contribution wise, if he can carry it on, maybe get to like 20 goals and over 10 assists. I mean, has he got a shout for player of the year? He should definitely be in the running. Nominee, most nominee definitely least, be a yeah. nominee, hundred uh, percent. You're looking at it, four goals behind Erling Haaland now in terms of the Golden Boot race, and you look at when he did win the Golden Boot. How many goals was he behind? Uh, three or four games before the end of the season. You know, he was a he needed a hat trick at the in the last game of the season mm. to win that Golden Boot. So I wouldn't put it past him. Wouldn't put it past him, and I, I think he's having an astonishing season. Let's move on to the substitute, Radu Dragusin. Sim gives him an eight. I gave him a seven. In terms of, um, we all felt feared the worst when Mickey van der Ven goes off a few minutes into the second half. Dragusin gets his big opportunity playing 41 minutes on the day. And I thought in every facet of his game, uh, he was brilliant defensively he was putting his body on the line there was one that he got right into the nuts and you're thinking oh, that one must have hurt and because uh, I was watching on TV and you just hear a massive like uh, ooh, <laughs> uh, everyone in the stadium that saw that replay on the uh, must have been on the big screen or something but um, it wasn't that what I was most impressed about with uh, Radu Dragusin was on the ball mm. and how progressive his passing was because when Mac- Mickey van der Ven goes off, especially playing against 10 men like that, you need someone at the back alongside Romero that's going to produce those progressive passes. And I think he did that. And he was getting up the pitch, uh, foraging in, into the uh, opposition half and uh, showing quality. Yeah, and also, you know, coming on at left centre-back, which maybe um, isn't his most natural position, but uh, obviously came on and looked really, really confident, looked like he was ready to step in and, and contribute to the team, which even though it was such a big game, it was the first time he was getting serious minutes, I thought he was so calm and composed. It was really, really impressive. Um, he seems like a very, very, very confident player for, for such a young age, and he's so physically imposing. I thought there was a few moments as well. Um, Villa get, uh, got in down the right-hand side, and he was able to, do some really great cutouts with uh, using his physicality to make sure he's getting that blocks in, which is really great. And as you say, on the ball, um, he played some really nice switches of play, which is really positive to see um, on some high long passes and also some really good incisive forward passes into space, into the likes of Saar and, and uh, Madison as well to progress Spurs up the pitch. Really confident display. And, if, uh, and that just goes to show you what a difference having you know depth in that kind of position can make. Because if we had someone else coming on, maybe it uh, could have been a different story. Mm. Um, and the last player that we're going to rate is Pierre Mahoibio, which I'm not too sure why, because he actually got less minutes than the team Werner. but sevens all round. And Ben as well. And Ben Tanko. Um, no, we don't have ratings for any of those. Uh, no? no, I rated them. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I only got told Hoybier. Okay. Uh, but Hoybier, we gave sevens all round. And um, look, I thought he came on, provided a positive cameo in the last uh, couple of minutes. And I think eight minutes of stoppage time or whatever it was at the end of the game, uh, he was really progressive driving forward in terms of there was one moment where he just completely sold an Aston Villa player down the river with a nice little turn and and some good passing so uh, Hoybier I thought it was his best cameo in a while yeah looked really sharp really uh, positive obviously did really well uh, in the latter stage of the game and um, really helped just um, allow Spurs to maintain their control and pass it forward but um, yeah touching on the the other players I thought Ben Tenkor had a really bright cameo 
I was really happy with him. The best uh, thing Ben Tankor did was lay one on Matty Cash. But I thought he looked quite sharp, looking sharper than, than he had been recently. And I was winning some really good challenges, playing the ball forward nicely. Um, and I was really happy with Ben Tankor. Hopefully he can build on that kind of display because I thought it was a really bright cameo from him. Yeah, I agree. I didn't, I didn't have any problems with uh, Ben Tankor's performance, but who I was really impressed with was Timo Werner. You know, um, everyone talks about how bad he is at finishing, but what a finish that was. Um, two goals in his last two games now for Timo Werner, even though he didn't have too much time on the pitch. And maybe he's starting to grow in confidence now as well. You can see the reaction he had to, to scoring. You know, he was, looked so delighted running over to Sonny uh, and giving him a massive hug. It was a great assist for him, but he had a lot to do from that position. First time finish into the far corner um, with, uh, with the side foot as well to get the power and the accuracy on that finish was um, a really really delightful finish and um, yeah let's hope he's, he takes that confidence into the next game was it, it was interesting considering Werner had his best game for us last week and he decided to bench him so you might have thought oh, is he going to be upset with that but didn't seem to affect him came off the bench and showed what uh, what Andrew was missing although Brennan obviously scored his goal as well but I thought it's just great to have everyone in form I think all all the all our attackers had a goal contribution yeah which um, is really important. And I think uh, from that Timo Werner performance definitely gave us bull scumps yesterday, didn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, good performance all round from the players. Let's move on to Ange Postacoglu. In terms of Ange, Sim gives him a nine. I gave him an eight. And um, look, I thought he managed the game perfectly well to be honest, uh, you're looking at the first half. I felt uh, there was a bit of frailties in terms of passing out the back. That was the only times that Villa really hurt us or were, were troubling us. And also we were getting good opportunities high up the pitch, but it was our final pass that were letting us down. But I felt like he um, he corrected that massively in that second half. Um, Van der Ven goes off injured early and you think, and everyone's fearing the worst. Dragusin comes in and it plays an exemplary game. Um, which is the coaching methods to uh, only a testament to Ange Postecoglou and the way he managed the game. And I felt like in that second half, we managed the game so well. I don't remember another game this season that we've managed so well um, from start to finish, really. Yeah, and what I liked about Ange is, uh, you know, t hearing him talk after the game, he was saying how in the first half he liked the control we had, but obviously, you know, Villa were tough to break down. But... Um, he noticed in the in that first half, near the end of the first half, Villa was starting to tire a bit, starting to look a bit leggy. And, you know, a, a different manager on another day might have thought, oh, you know, we need to change things up. It's not working that first half. We only had one shot, but he didn't think that. He thought, look, if we keep going the way we're going, we're going to be able to tire them out. We're going to be able to uh, puncture through that defence uh, if, uh, if we keep going like this. And that's exactly what happened in that second half. We scored four great goals. And I thought all his substitutes, all his substitutes um, uh, kind of impacted the game positively as well uh, as I said before um, obviously Werner came on and scored and I thought Bentico, Hoybier and Dragusheen all impacted the game really really well uh, when coming off the bench and to, to win such a big game like this in the manner that we won with the football that we played um, hopefully we just keep going from going from strength to strength but I thought it was a testament to Ange and um, his ability in big games to pull out a big performance and that's exactly what we did uh, yesterday and puts us in a really good position now when going for that top four Yeah and you're looking at Ange and everyone was wondering when the Spurs going to get back to those levels that we showed in the first 10 games but I think this is probably our best performance of the season never mind uh, getting back to the levels of the first 10 games which is a massive testament to Ange we all thought that once we get our first choice players back on that pitch you're going to start to see a much increased level of performance it's taken a couple of weeks we have some, had some bumps in the road in terms of Poro being out and a doggy being out to put a stop to us getting that first team back but it was back there yesterday and uh, performance was there for all to see. So big up to Ange Postacoglu, big up to the team. We have put ourselves um, ahead in the top four race. I know we're not fourth yet, but I feel like right now it's advantage Spurs in this top four race. So let us know your thoughts in the player ratings in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.